What is up guys, welcome to our living space in our Airbnb. Sam is over there getting prepped for a very special occasion. I feel like I'm taking you to drive your first V12 Lamborghini, which you is- You are, you are. <laughs> yeah. it's, yeah, I think it's the only way, the right way. Sure, yeah. if you don't drive a challenge for Dali, call me. <laughs> Today, I'm also driving a McLaren 720S, but it is the most beautiful McLaren 720S I've ever seen in pictures. I've not actually seen it in the flesh. So myself and Sam are heading down into Monaco so that we're gonna pick up an Aventador SV and a McLaren 720S and then take them up into the coastal roads and just have some fun. What's the key not found? <laughs> That's it, let's just... Oh, <laughs> rad! Now, since the media drive. Yes, which was this time last year. Have I driven one of these since? Have you not? <gasps> I, have, I haven't. Ooh. I've I driven haven't. it twice since, both off camera. However, what I have experienced, there is the tornadoes of Monaco. What I have experienced, which I was so desperate to experience on the media drive that every single other wave of media got to experience, but we didn't, was the 720S on track. You've experienced that? I have. When? Mr. Oliver Webb took me out for some hot laps at Yas Marina. Okay, nice. Now talk about, talk about name dropping. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know if you know, races for LMP1. I was desperate to see the potential of what this is because McLaren talks so highly about the 720S and unfortunately my driving capabilities were just never gonna get more than 40-50% of what this car's capable of. It's a very uh, humble thing of you to say. But on the road as well. Sure, 20% more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. So, we now are sat in definitely, I was gonna say arguably, definitely the best spec 720S of customer deliveries that I've seen. Agreed, because even the first MSO car, which was that pinky purple with the white interior, I, I you know, you could say it was highly spec, but I don't think it was as nice as this. No, this is beautiful all around. And my peripherals, the first impression when I jumped in this car was how much blue you get to see. A lot of blue and a lot of, a lot of light. So the owner, who is living the dream down in the south of France, having the Aventador SV as his lunatic car and the McLaren 720S as his, as his science precise computer game, he's got two of the completely opposite end of the spectrum cars. I've just jumped out from driving the Aventador SV. <laughs> and I'm now sat in the cabin of the McLaren 720S. Firstly, what is life? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Monaco. It's just unbelievable. We're driving a very, very familiar coastal road that I've shot a few videos on driving this wonderful car and the experience cruising around is these race seats are the things to have. Yes. Okay, I'm so glad you said that because the second 720s I drove after the fresh drives had these race seats and a carbon roof, so not this wonderful glass. So you roof. felt more cocooned? It, it felt more purposeful okay. because the car I drove on the fresh drive was a very comfort spec car Yeah. and I was a bit unimpressed. Yours didn't even have a sports exhaust. No. <laughs> but when you get in one with the race seats and Alcantara and lots of lovely glossy carbon, yeah. it's suddenly like, ooh, this feels like a, a supercar. This feels like, yeah, a purpose built. This is closer towards an LT. Well, yeah, it's close to a bit closer towards what you kind of want from a car that does the performance stats that this thing does. Yeah. Aesthetically. Yeah. So let's go for a quick blast. It's only ever going to be quick in this thing. Oh! <laughs> it's that that second bit when the turbos kick in because it's not turbo lag, it's like turbo boost. Yeah. Then it gets not. <laughs> when you watch Fast and the Furious 1 and 2 and the visual special effects that you have when they press not, <laughs> yeah. that's what happens. Warp speed, it's Star Trek warp speed. Yeah. It's scarily oh. fast. It feels like it is on rails. And it's just a little nippy mosquito. There are very yeah, few cars that I get car sick in. 
but this is one of them. <laughs> you get a different type of headache driving this car as you do the Aventador SV. Well, your organs are just moving in ways that they shouldn't move in a road car. The, the G-forces you experience on a public road driving this car at arguably 30% of its capabilities. I mean, this guy's got 350 kilometers on the clock. So we're, we're in the running period, so we're having to drive it at lesser capabilities than it is. And we're like, ah! Can I ask you a question though? Yes. Because we did just jump out of an Aventador SV. Yeah. And I know that's a more expensive car, but it's also a much older car. Yeah. Which one would you have? I mean, I know your answer because you're Mr. Lamborghini, but yeah. this car is better in every single way. Every single way, on paper and off paper. But I think I got more en enjoyment yeah. out of the Aventador. You got more of a connection. Yeah, more of a thrill. Yeah. This is, oh, yeah. This is like still mind-bendingly fast. Yeah. And I'm enjoying it more than I did the first time I ever stepped in a 720S. But... Uh, Aventador didn't do that. And <laughs> Aventador definitely didn't do that. That was an eight-point okay. turn. Of course my answer is going to be Aventador. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Please. Referring back to the video that you did of the 360 versus C63, right? Sure. Technically, it's the same question. Because the 360, you're gonna get the thrills and the spills. And the C63 is the clinical, dailyable, precise wagon. Whereas this is the C63 and the Aventador is the, is the 360. Yeah. Do you, do you, I, I get what you're yeah. saying, I totally get what you're so, saying. It comes down to what you want from a car personally. Exactly. And everyone, would say, oh, can you imagine having both Dream 2 car garage? Because you've got a 360 for the weekends and then you've got a C63 for the week. The owner of this car is living that yeah. on scales that we just can't are un comprehend. Un yeah. Unattainable <laughs> and completely, yeah, we, we just can't comprehend because what he's able to do is Monday to Friday cruise around in a unbelievably beautiful McLaren 720S, the future of supercars. I do feel like the 720S is introducing a new era of performance defining supercars. It's like capable supercars. Do you find it's like when the first Flappy, Battle, Flappy Paddles came out? The 720S is like the 360 with an F1. Yeah, but the F1 was still shite, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, oh, well, this is so good. I think what this car represents is cap you know, such capable supercars. Because look, I mean, we are going terrifyingly fast. Levels of unsafe fast. No, it's very safe. I'm sure. Like, the fact that I'm able to concentrate on where this video is going, the conversation, and still talk, but drive this, how I'm driving this. Like, we did the event store and all I could do was scream. <laughs> I couldn't think, I just screamed. Whilst this, I... It's on rails. Yeah. It is like I am riding the back of a mosquito. Oh. But yet, it's unbelievably comfortable. Yeah. It's We can talk, we can hear ourselves speaking. Yeah. We've got, you know, things that might or might not work. <laughs> but it's... That's what I think, if you look at the 488, which is arguably is still a little bit dated, or you look at a Huracan, or you look at whatever, they're unbelievably usable. Yeah. They're crazy fast, but so usable. And that's what I think the 720 represents. How has this video got to be like such a philosophical well, view really has on the because, history of supercars? Because when I just <laughs> wanted to talk about how good this car looked. One of the coolest things that I've experienced not inside the McLaren 720S today. That got me really excited. Possibly the most excited I've been of all of today. And I drove an Aventador S and I've driven a 720S. SV. Yeah, Sorry, SV. Just, yeah. I was behind the wheel cruising in the SV and the flame that came out the back of this car. Now most things McLaren engineer to happen. You know, like you get a shunt in sport mode, you get a shunt on the upshift. McLaren have engineered that in so that it feels like you're connecting to the car. That wasn't supposed to happen, that massive flame coming out of that. <laughs> and I genuinely thought I was gonna come around the corner and the car was gonna be on fire. <laughs> but it wasn't, it was about a three foot flame that I didn't catch on camera. It was yellow, yeah. whereas the McLaren flames are normally blue after sure. burn attack. It was this massive yellow flame that I was like, oh my God, I've never seen that from a McLaren and that is 
the most excited I got today. <laughs> I'm glad for you. This drive, this experience, this day has changed my sort of thing around the 720S. I was a little bit confused by it. I didn't have enough time with it um, when I was down in Rome for the first time. So maybe my video was a little bit skewed when I put it out. I was like, oh, I'm not too sure about this car. But now that I've done some more miles in it, in a spec that I would buy from the factory, enjoyed it. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Head over to Sam's channel because I sat in the passenger seat as he drove the Aventador SV for the first time. His first time ever driving a V12 Lambo? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> so that was an experience. I will see you very soon, guys. Make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for the Monaco content. Goodbye!